Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you, thank you doctor for your enlightening speech um, Doctor, as we look at uh, the Muslim world today uh, in general and in particular the Muslim countries the these countries are refuse actually refuse to implement the divine law in their administration so as muslim we are required to become a true muslim according to the teaching to the true teaching of al quran as said in the Allah decree in the Surah Al-Baqarah verses 208 Ya ayyuhal amanu khulu fi silmika Meaning O you who believe enter into Islam wholeheartedly and don't follow the footstep of the evil Okay So in this context what is your comment, doctor? And if you can give some advice to them. Thank you. Well, that was a question that there are many Muslim countries which have majority Muslims, but they aren't implementing Islam as Sharia and in this situation we have all each country has its own problems and knows pros and cons and yes there are many Muslim countries who have implemented the Sharia and there are countries of two types one which country which have Muslim majority one country Muslims who claim that Quran is the constitution, the difference between the two. In countries where Muslims are almost all in majority, almost all, there's a difference between majority means even if you're 51% you're called a majority. 51% is also majority. But in countries where most are Muslims, what is my advice? I'd see I am thy. I'm not a politician. I'm a Dai. But Allah has blessed me that being a small person, being an insignificant person, Allah has given me the ni'amah, the blessing of meeting leaders, kings, sheikhs, presidents, chief ministers, alhamdulillah. And we as a Dai, we do what we can in a limited capacity. I know today, there are supposed to be 56, approximately 56 countries in which Muslims are in majority. <clears throat> some have proclaimed Islam as a religion. Some have proclaimed beside Islam as a religion, Islam, it, it as an Islamic country. Some have, some have not. I had the pleasure of being invited in 2014. In 2014, that's approximately one and a half year back in November 2014 I was invited by the president of the Republic of Gambia and when I got the invitation I did not know Gambia existed in the world so I saw in the map where is Gambia and I saw it is in between west coast of Africa and Senegal so I checked up president calling me, so okay, so I gave him a date, okay, I'll come. And I went there for a week, similarly with the crew went there. And when I flew to Senegal, the foreign minister came to pick me up. When I landed on the airport, the full cabinet was there. I'm saying, what is this? When I went out of the airport, I saw a big queue of thousands of people at the airport for kilometers. I'm shocked. I don't know this country and thousands of people, Dr. Zakir, Ahlan, Masailan. I never received such a reception anywhere before. And then I came to know the president, Al-Hajj Jame. 
he happened to be my fan and I've gone to many king of Saudi Arabia uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed many 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 the list is long but the treatment I got here was something which is phenomenal he gave me his own car without the number plate Bentley and all then I realized that fine I went there and I found that Alhamdulillah he was a good Muslim and in my talk and I told him personally the president that why don't you make and he told me that the population of Gambia was 90% because of Peach TV today it is more than 95% Peach TV is very popular because of you the population of Muslims have become more than 95% so I told him that Sheikh Al Hajj president why don't you declare this country as an Islamic country he said inshallah inshallah and in the lecture I always kept on saying that and alhamdulillah I'm doing my job see our job is to do zikr our job is to deliver the message changing hearts in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says to the messenger in Surah Jashia chapter number 88 verse number 21 22 our job is to deliver the message and alhamdulillah it was one of a phenomenal trip I came back just three four months back last year after about 10 months the president of Gambia declared his country to be the first Islamic Republic country in the whole of Africa you know he's my fan and we as fan I respect him he's a good Muslim I didn't go on and picking up things okay why you did this why you did that he respected me I respected him I gave him advice and alhamdulillah he followed my advice and today though it's a small country having a population of only two million at least I can say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this small dai was instrumental in making one small country as the Islamic state inshallah and he also appointed me as the religious advisor and we are doing a job as I said the Muslims should be united and when we meet people who are in the position depending on the situation if you if you read the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sometimes when he saw things which were wrong he he gave advice in a very beautiful manner sometimes he immediately rectified it sometimes with words sometimes with actions depending upon the situation now the situation that we in we as Daiza we try and say but natural it is the duty of every Muslim as Allah has promised I ended my talk with the verse of the Quran which is repeated thrice Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 33 Surah Saf chapter 16 verse number 9 Surah Fatah chapter 28 verse uh, Surah Fatah chapter 48 verse number 28 that Allah will make his deen prevail with or without you with or without me the rubbish that you and me are we are nothing Allah doesn't require you and me if I start thinking that Islam is spreading because I'm doing dawah, I'm the biggest fool in the world. Allah doesn't require me. What am I doing? I'm making hay while the sun is shining. Allah has already promised his deen will prevail. He doesn't require me. He doesn't require Zakir Naik. He doesn't require Peace TV. We are making hay while the sun is shining. We are trying to earn a profit's reward by doing a profit job. We are doing dawah. Allah doesn't require us whether the countries want or not whether the countries want Islam to come or not is Allah will make it prevail now if you are instrumental in making Islam come established as a deen you will get sawab if Allah has given you a position where you can be instrumental in making Islam prevail you will get sawab whether we want it or not Allah has given a promise and Allah always speaks the truth that Islam will prevail Allah doesn't require me or Peace TV to spread Islam. Allah doesn't require anyone in this world to establish his deen. He is already promised. Now, if a person is in position, when I gave advice, a simple, humble advice of mine to the president of Gambia, and he accepted it after a few months, Alhamdulillah. Allah doesn't require anyone. We have to keep, Allah will ask you did you follow the Quran and Sunnah Allah will not ask you why did you not make this deen as a religion 
of this country because you are not in a position Allah will ask me that did I give advice to the people who I met in my humble way I try my level best with hikmah we want to be effective as dais and alhamdulillah this is the beauty of Islam that our job is to do zikr whether they follow or not we will get our sawa and inshallah inshallah what we find that inshallah I believe that though the ummah is fragmented we see signs that now we find the generation coming and we find signs that mashallah more women are doing hijab people are coming closer to the Quran slowly slowly inshallah and when they come back to Quran and Sunnah again Islam and the Muslims would be on top of the world hope that answers the question fanatical large nations with slight outward power and legal effort in a short period of time and in their place he so established exalted qualities that they became as firm as if they had mingled with their very blood peace be upon him his name is Muhammad it was 1400 years ago there were incredible habits among Arabian society in Mecca you know you can never see such a savage people they used to bury their daughters alive can you believe this and this was a big habit and they used to proud of this and they also used to be sex addict or alcohol dependent you know they were drunk all the time or they used to be hardly racist interest was general thing there was no value of women